Today we're going to be starting a new section of our chemistry unit called macromolecules. And if you look at the word macro, um, macro means big. If you think about micro, micro means tiny. So we're talking about bigger molecules here. So as you remember from this past week, we learned about chemicals and how chemical bonds form between atoms. Now we're going to learn how those atoms are held together to form big things like molecules. And the four main molecules that are important for living things are carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, which are fats, and nucleic acids. That sounds like a big word, but it's just a fancy word for DNA. I'm sure you've learned about DNA in the past when you talked about cells. So um, this is the order that I'll be talking about things. Obviously, these would be the main topics if you want to put them on the left-hand side of your Cornell notes. These are the order that I'll be talking about them, and then on the right-hand side, you can take notes. And when we talk about the elements that make up living things, 96% of all living things are made up of four elements, four main elements, and that's carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. So when we talk about these macromolecules, most of them use these elements in their structure, so keep an eye out for that. And like I said in the introduction, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen make up the four main groups of macromolecules found in living things. So we'll be talking about carbohydrates, fats, proteins, and nucleic acids. A macromolecule is a large molecule made up of smaller molecules chained together. So we call those small molecules, which I drew here in blue, a monomer, which would be a single molecule. And when they're all linked together, like down here at the bottom, we call that a polymer. So that would be the large molecule made of many monomers linked together. Now if you break down those words monomer and polymer, monomer means one, so you can think of mono as a single unit, and poly means several. So we have several molecules linked together, several monomers. This is important when we start to talk about the monomers of various macromolecules. So the first macromolecule we'll be talking about is carbohydrates. Now the monomer, or the single unit of a carbohydrate, is called a monosaccharide. And now, when you see the word saccharide, that just means sugar. So a carbohydrate is the type of sugar or starch. So the single unit is a mono, mono means one, saccharide, one sugar. An example would be glucose. And a, the polymer of carbohydrates is called a polysaccharide. Remember, poly means several. So several sugars that are going to be linked together. That would be a starch, which is a, just a larger sugar compound. And the structure, so if you look on the right here, this picture is a structure of a um, carbohydrate. So it comes with a ring of carbon. Well, it's not really a ring. It's got that, um, it's got edges here, but these would be the carbons that are linked together, which they call a ring. So when you see a structure that looks like this, this is a carbon ring, which is a carbohydrate. And if you look at the word carbohydrate, carbo means carbon, hydrate means there's water in it. So remember oxygen and um, hydrogen, H2O is water. So carbon plus water makes a carbohydrate. That would be the chemical structure. And that's glucose on the right-hand side, so that was just a simple sugar. And the uses of carbohydrates for um, animals and plants. Animals, like humans, use carbohydrates for energy. So we need to take in carbohydrates, eat them. Our body breaks them down to give us energy. And plants make it in their plant structure, which I'll show you examples coming up. So here are some more examples of the structure of carbohydrates. So if you look at this first one is glucose, which I showed you before. That is a monosaccharide, just a single sugar. And then to the right of that, we have a disaccharide. Di means two. 
So this is two sugars, if you see, one, two linked together, and that would be sucrose, which is um, just table sugar. And then on the bottom here, we have a long chain of sugars. This one is amylase, amylose, and this would be a polysaccharide. Remember, poly means several, so several sugars that are linked together. Here I just included some pictures of actual plant starches. So these are plant cells, and you can see inside those cells these little boxes here. These would be the actual plant starches. So the, the next macromolecule we'll be talking about is lipids. Lipids is just another word for fats. So the monomer, the smallest unit of a lipid, is called a fatty acid. The polymer, or the larger unit, um, is just called a lipid or a fat. The structure, which I'll show you in the next slide, is three long chains of carbon and hydrogen on a glycerol molecule. The way animals use fats, so we need fats in our body, um, the way we use them is to store energy for times when maybe we don't have food to eat or if we're doing excessive exercise or healing after an injury. We need fat because it helps us heal. It gives our body the energy that it needs if we're not eating at that particular moment. It also can be used for warmth, like if you see that walrus on the right-hand side. Oops. He has a lot of blubber. That blubber keeps him warm in the freezing cold water, so it's good. We also use it for protection. Um, our body, not all of our body has bones. If you feel your stomach, there's a lot of important organs in there, but there's no bones protecting them. So the fats around our stomach keeps our organs protected. And also waterproofing, if you think about your skin. Um, when you get your skin wet, the water beads off because we have some oils in our skin that help protect us from water so we don't swell up like a sponge. So here are some fatty acid structures. So don't get too caught up with these, but what you see here is the glycerol molecule I mentioned before. And in red, these are the fatty acid chains, the carbon and hydrogen chains. So if you look um, at the triglyceride molecule below, that's what it would look like in three-dimensional form. So it's kind of got three little tails hanging off of it. Those are the fatty acid tails. And then on the right-hand side here, this is an image of a, um, a cell membrane. So cells are protected by a phospholipid bilayer, lipids. Remember, lipids means fats. So these fats surround every single cell in our body. So it's very important that we are eating fats in our diet and healthy fats like olive oils and avocados and the good kind of fats that help our body rebuild its tissue, that help our cells stay healthy. Here are just some images of actual human fat cells that I thought were kind of cool. Um, it kind of looks like a circle, right? If you think of, if you put oil in water, it kind of looks like little bubbles. That's what it reminds me of. I just thought it was kind of interesting to see an actual fat cell. Our next macromolecule, and probably the most important one, is protein. So the monomer of protein would be an amino acid. The polymer, or the large molecules, are called proteins or polypeptides. The structure, which I'll show you on the next slide, there is an amino group, a carboxyl group, and an R group. Don't get too caught up with those words at this moment. And the way we use proteins to build muscles, to build bones, all of our hormones, enzymes, most of the molecules in our body are made of protein. So it's really important that we're getting enough protein in our diet so our cells can function properly. And if you look at this image to the right, this would be a 3D image, and obviously they make it a pretty color. It's not really that color when it's inside our bodies. But that is an enzyme in our body that helps us digest sugars. So on the top left here, this is the atomic structure of an amino acid. So we have the amine group that I mentioned before. It's just two hydrogens bonded to a nitrogen. Then we have the carbon 
carboxyl group over here. We've got some carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. And the R group, this is the part that changes depending on what type of amino acid we're talking about. There's 20 amino acids, so each one would have a different side chain, a different R group. And then below here, you see these tiny little circles represent um, the individual amino acids. And when they're linked together, that's when we have a protein. So depending on what order these amino acids are put together in, it would be a different sort of molecule. It would have its own function. The last macromolecule we'll be talking about is nucleic acid. So the monomer, or the single unit of a nucleic acid, is called a nucleotide. The polymer, or the large unit, is called a nucleic acid. The structure is a 5-carbon sugar, so again, that 5-carbon ring, remember when we talked about carbohydrates, which is attached to a nitrogen base and a phosphate group. We use these, all living things use these, to store their genetic code. So this is their DNA, the, the thing that codes for our physical characteristics. All living things, even bacteria, plants, everything that's alive has a genetic code, has DNA. So if you look at the image to the right, that would be a um, picture of a DNA molecule. So these individual things here, adenine, thionine, guanine, and cytosine, these are the individual nucleotides. So those are the monomers, those are the single units. And when a bunch of those are put together, that's when we have the large unit of DNA, the large nucleic acid. So just to sum up here, we have our four organic compounds, or our macromolecules, carbohydrates, so when a large carbohydrate would be the polysaccharide, that would be a bunch of saccharides linked together. And then when we break them down, let's say if we were digesting something, if we, were, we had eaten a piece of bread, which is a carbohydrate, and our body digests it until we have a single unit, a monosaccharide. That's the unit that would be absorbed into our bloodstream for us to use, the monosaccharide. Then if we look at the lipids, remember the large ones were things like triglycerides, and then those are broken down into the monomer, or the fatty acids, the single unit. And then the proteins, remember the large ones were called peptides or polypeptides, and the smallest unit are the amino acids. And the nucleic acid, which was the last one I just talked about, the smallest unit would be the nucleotides. Remember the adenine and thionine linked together? And the large unit that they make up is DNA. So I hope you understood this video and we're taking notes. You can enter your notes on the Schoology website um, under the Google form. And if anything confused you, feel free to rewind. Otherwise, I will see you in class on Monday.